Hi everyone, uh, I'm Daniel Leduc and I'm a marine ecologist at NIWA. And during the last two years, my colleagues and I have been uh, doing a project on submarine canyons. And this project is all about connectivity. And that's a, a, a concept you're, you've already heard about today. And we all have some kind of feeling as to what it means. And it's well summarized by the saying, ki uta ki tai, mountains to the sea. Um, and what we wanted to do with this project is to see if this connectivity extends to the deep sea by looking at submarine canyons and how they transport organic matter uh, into the deep. To trace organic matter, you need to look at chemical tracers. So you need to analyze the sediments. So the approach was basically to, to take sediments from canyons, characterize its chemical signature, then compare it to sediments from offshore, which are completely marine, and sediments from rivers, which are completely land-derived. That's in a nutshell the approach that we used. Um, we looked at two very different canyons, just for comparative purposes. The first one is the Hokitika Canyon on the west coast of the South Island, which is a very long, windy, narrow kind of canyon. And we, we had sites from 200 to 2,000 meters depth. Um, we also we looked at two river catchments, the Hokitika and the Fataroa in dark green. Um, and we chose those because they pump out a lot of sediment into the ocean and also because they're upstream from the canyon because the currents flow northeast. That's my phone running out of power. On the east coast, we looked at the Kaikura Canyon. It's very different. It's very short, very steep, and very close inland. Um, and again, we had sites going down the canyon from shallow to deep. And we looked at three river catchments nearby. Um, which don't pump out as much as on the west coast because it's not as much rain. But they're, locally they're, they're quite important. The Conway, the Wayao, and the Hurunui. So um, are, the ca are the canyons different? Um, in short, yes, they are quite different. Um, there's, the top graph there shows you the, the amount of land organic matter, and the bottom one shows you the amount of marine-derived organic matter. And along the, the axis at the bottom, that's dist distance from land. So if you look at the red dots, the Kaikoura Canyon has um, originally in the shallow parts a lot of land-derived organic matter. And that goes down very quickly as you go down the canyon. Um, exactly the opposite for marine-derived matter in the Kaikoura Canyon. This goes up with depth. And that's probably because it's a high productivity area, a lot of phytoplankton growth, and the canyon acts to focus it in very small and small, smaller areas. But there's still a fair input of land-derived uh, matter in there. The Hokitika is quite different. Um, there's a fair bit of, that's the green dot. So there's a fair bit of land-derived organic matter. And it seems to, uh, if anything, go up with, as you go away from the coast, which we did not expect. Whereas the marine concentrations are very low throughout the entire canyon. That's probably linked to the, um, the low productivity of the area, as well as the huge amounts of organic matter being pumped into the ocean by the local rivers. In fact, about 80 to 100 percent of the organic matter in the canyon comes from land, which um, is, is quite a lot. Um, we also use a new tool that was developed by Max Gibbs at NIWA and um, that allows us to look at different catchments instead of just marine versus land. And on the east coast, how much time have I got? Okay. Um, most of the material, organic material, came from the Fataroa catchment, which is in dark green. So it's further to the south than the Hoktika, Hoktika catchment. And that's probably because of the uh, currents, which um, basically carries the, the material across the path of the canyon. On the, uh, the Kaikoura side, um, most of the organic matter came from the Conway and the Hurunui catchments, whereas the Wayao catchment in the middle uh, didn't contribute very much. Um, there's no obvious cause to it, but uh, the locals in Kaikoura tell us that the Wayao River doesn't flow as fast as the other rivers, which uh, is probably um, the reason why it doesn't sort of shoot it out as far and doesn't get caught in the current as much. So in, in conclusion, it, what we're finding is that the terrestrial footprints of New Zealand stretches out a long way, um, and that therefore changes in land use might have effects all the way down to the deep sea. And when material gets there, it can't go anywhere else. So it will either accumulate or get used up. It may be good or bad connectivity. We're not sure. It depends on what we're talking about. We also wanted, you know, 
expand this to other canyons around New Zealand because we have about 250 of them. Uh, we're also looking at the food web. And what would be really interesting is to look at carbon sinks in terms of um, organic material making it down to the deep sea, as well as pollutants. And now I have to stop. Thank you.